Okay, just gonna do a couple of quick things here before I go to bed. I wanted to get a little bit more progress done on this today after doing some uh, chores and work and stuff. But anyway, we're given box here one underscore 44, estimating a 1.4 megabyte, megabyte uh, floppy, right? But we're not really using that space. You see, I, I did the stat. Um, the stat command here in OpenBSD formatted for percent %z. So for regular binary file here, just gives the size, which is 3072. Or I think you can do word count and specify it, um, but that just gives it gives the same thing. Okay, but with some white space. Anyway, 3072, which matches up because our boot sector and everything, all our stuff on the disk is just five or six, six sectors of 512 bytes each. As far as it stands right now, I wanna expand this out from 3072 bytes to 1.44 meg and then deal with that for a while till we need it to be, um, to be bigger and larger at that point. I looked around on the internet, found a couple things that I could do for this um, DD being the main one, so I'm going to use the DD command. I'm going to change this a little bit. Instead of doing os.bin, we're going to do like a temporary file, and then we're going to write our current os.bin, which is our 3072 bytes, we're going to write that into a larger file that is the size uh, that we want, which is 1.44 megabytes. Uh, the marketed size of 1.44 megabyte floppy disk wasn't truly 1.44 megabytes in the traditional sense. I think it was like uh, 512 bytes a sector times, I think it was 18 tracks. And then there were like 80, or it was 18 sectors per track and there were 80 tracks per head, right? And that's about 720 kilobytes. And that was times two. And that is roundabouts 1.44 megabytes, which that's the number we're gonna look at and try to emulate with our byte size here. Or you can do 1024 for a kilobyte, times 1440, 1.44 megabytes as well. So that's the number we're gonna get. And we're gonna make a file of that size with DD and we're just gonna put it in the OS thing here to, uh, to get things rolling so we don't have to deal with it. If we do a semicolon and then we continue the line character, we can pass multiple things to the shell and have them execute one after another. So I'm gonna run the DD command, which I forget what that stands for. What does that stand for? Uh, convert and copy a file, so there's not really I, I was hoping there were two words that started with D that explained that acronym, but I am out of luck this night, and that's okay. We have different files we can count on, like true and false and zero and null, if we want to get certain bytes that are always going to be sort of guaranteed to be there within the file system. So we're going to use zero to just fill out a file, a new file. Um, that is our 1.44 megabyte size. We're just going to fill it with zeros and then write in our current os.bin into the first however many sectors it takes up and put the output file we're going to call it os.bin and uh, our block size we're going to set is 512 which i think is the default but i'm just going to put it here anyway and the counts how many blocks we want to do i'm going to do our full 1.44 meg size 1474560 bytes divided by our 512 byte block size 2880 all right and after we make our os.bin file our new os.bin file we're going to write in our current os.bin that we renamed to temp, we're just going to write over into the first six sectors of our new zero padded out binary file. So our input file here is going to be our previous temp.bin that we should have created by now. Um, our output file is the os.bin and then the only other thing we have to do is convert no truncate, yeah, convert conv and then no trunk, which means no truncate. Yeah, anything not explicitly written by DD will not be like overwritten. But anyway, what that means is this, it's going to copy this into this, however much space this takes up. Um, that's all we have to do here, and that should be good. So if we run make clean again, and make OS, if I can type, um, it should do, and it worked. And you see the commands here. So we catted it, we're sending this to the shell, then we're running the next two. 2,880 block records in and out, bytes transferred, and then we're writing our temporary into the first six sectors because it's only 3,072 bytes long, so it says here 3,072 bytes transferred, six blocks of 512 bytes each. And if we look at, I don't know if Hextemp will look very good here, but if we look at our OS.bin, Excel find file, let's do that. This shows the ASCII over here, which I can probably do in the other command, but I don't know how. Still, our first boost sector is written. That's fine. 55AA, magic number. 
We got our kernel. You can see we have the strings in the kernel here. We got our file table afterwards. So stuff looks to be written correctly. There's our fake calculator at the end. So stuff's all good. And then if we run box again, we'll see that it does work. Directory. One other thing I found that's kind of a bug is that uh, I'm not checking the full length of the entry that the user is inputting still. They can put in D and it'll run directory or G for the graphics test. So I probably should look at changing that right, but uh, not at the moment. Just doing a couple small things. Now that we got this working, we're padding everything out. The only other thing I wanted to do was not have to type in box underscore Q every time I want to run this. So I'm going to put that into our make file as well. Um, and I'm going to put it, uh, I'll just put it before clean. Let's do that. And we'll call it run so we can use make run. And this is going to use our OS. So by calling make run, it will do all of this. It will make our OS.bin. And then we're just going to call box underscore Q. I think after this, we still have a temp.bin. So I'm going to get rid of, we still have a temp.bin, don't we? Yeah, I'll need to delete that after this as well. I want to delete that. Um, remove temp.bin. There we go. So this will build all of this, build our os.bin file, and then run box, and we should be good to go. All right. Also, yeah, if you just call make, it'll it'll find the first target if nothing else is in there. Um, if you have it set up simply like I do, so that'll run the OS part. All right. So if we call make run. It does work. I also learned how to move this with the mouse and open BSD. Just hold down Meta or Alt. You know, Alt and left mouse. That that's awesome. So now we got the run, and we can test even faster. Faster iteration time. That doesn't work because I'm not handling backspace. Let's try again. Coolio cool beans. So let's move over to the kernel. The current way the uh, the file browser works, it clears the screen and then it displays. So I'm kind of I'm just gonna take out the clear screen part for that and the print registers. I don't really need to reset the screen every time I do that. Um, the main menu I will. Sure, that's fine. The first time this displays, we'll keep that. But the uh, the file browser, we don't really need to do that. We can just have it print under the prompt and it'll be more like this over here, this whole Unix thing where it keeps typing and scrolling down the screen. So I can have something reset the screen later, but for this, I'm just gonna take this off because I don't really care for it. Don't really care for it. The same thing for print registers, which is probably down here. That's graph registers print. Don't, don't wanna do this here. So if we type directory or just D, it should print right below us. We should probably start off with the new line first. Um, that program's not found. We can try again, it'll print again. That one will reset the screen, that's fine. Print reg also prints, any key to go back. All right, let's put a new line there so that just looks a little bit better, more professional. File table heading, I also want to, um, let's do it, let's just do here. I wanna try out the equal directive. I'm just gonna call it NL for new line. We're going to do equals um, 0xA, 0xD. And then we'll try it just right here and see if it works. NL, because that's a little bit less typing I'll have to do. So that works. Kernel booted. All right. So we're going to replace these things with new lines. Um, what did I want to put? The new line before this started, NL. All right. And also right here, NL. So now if we do directory, there we go, prints below the cursor. Doesn't that look nice? Looks pretty good. No, I don't want to try again. Go back goes back. We probably can take out the go back now. I don't really want to deal with that. We don't need to clear the screen again, but I don't know. We can leave it. Print reg. Print registers, we don't really need to print go back message and go back. We can just go back because we already see it on the screen now. Look at that, just get rid of all of it. Simplifying code. So I wanted to move the check files code. User can input program to load. So this I wanna put, basically I wanna call this from here where we get in the input. I wanna check the commands and then the files from our prompt, not from a specific other thing. Um, so that our directory or our list files command just lists our files to the screen. It's not gonna do any other thing. I don't know if simplify is the right word, but kind of delegate duties a little better through that. We don't really need this anymore. 
because the main menu is already going to be displayed really. If we want to redisplay it, we can run a reboot command. So we don't really need to do that. Just do this. There we go. Except for that. Get rid of these. So get program name, program name loop, searching for everything. Not found. Found program. Program loaded. All right. All of this. All of this code. We are going to check in our check files. Here we go. Look at that. Control Y. Bam. Lots of stuff. All right. Otherwise, we did not find the input. So the other thing was file table end, right? So we have to go there. Where are we calling file table end? Anywhere in here? I still have a to do to do. That's nice. Might take that out later. <laughs> So after we check commands, we want to check the files and get rid of this instead of that. Get keystroke. Well, this is getting the keystroke, which we don't really need to do. We don't need to do this either. But they, we already got a keystroke by this point, so we don't really need to do that. SI points to command string. Probably start search is where we need to do this, right? Teletype output, don't need to do that. See, we're simplifying as we go. Tart search. I like searching for pop tarts. They're not good for you, but they're good for breakfast. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think they had a French toast one with like cinnamon and stuff on it. It seemed kind of plain, but it tasted really good. I think it was French toast. I don't know if they still make that, but it was delicious. Cinnamon roll ones, roll ones were all right as well. I don't remember my favorite pop tart flavor. It's probably the French toast one though. So do I need to do anything different here? So we we already have SI pointing to command string. So we don't really need to do that. This needs to be DI or SI because SI is pointing to our command string. Let's put it after here. The file table character, if we're starting at the beginning, if we're at the end of the file table, program was not found, okay. Otherwise we'll compare it and we'll start our comparison. If not, we go to the next entry. Okay, this needs to be S. DIs need to be SI here. I'm gonna move this back. Not found strings, the program was not found. That's okay. See this jumps, if the program was not found, we're gonna to go to the end of the file table. Actually, that's if they wanna continue. If they don't wanna continue, we should probably just jump to get input, right? If, they, if the program was not found and they don't wanna search again, we should probably just go to get input here. It should be the next round of user input. That should be okay. Otherwise, we found the program, so we're going to go. We're going to load it and jump to it. This input was not found. This prints that the program was not found. Okay, so that should be okay. Let's do program slash file name for the not found string. Program slash file not found. Try again. So now we got to see if we broke anything or if it even assembles. All right, get program name undefined symbols. Jump equal get program name 199. All right. Oh, I don't need that anymore. So if we printed everything out to screen, then we can just go back to get input. And get our next input here. Well, I guess we don't need to do input not found. We have to go down to program. We have to check the files. If neither were found, then we can go to input not found. So this is a last case in case there was no command or file or program that worked, right? We'd go to input not found if nothing was found. But we do want to immediately go down from checking the commands here to check files. So that doesn't work. Oh, it's very unfortunate. That's okay. I'll try and fix this here. If we reach the end of file table without doing anything, instead of program not found, we'll go to... Um, I guess input not found. We'll go down, we'll just go down here. Then we don't have to deal with this. Right? Is that what I call the input not? Yeah, okay. And we don't need to do program not found. So get rid of it. Start search. Is that anywhere else? We have restart search, but not start search. I think this is the only place start search is at. So I can get rid of this label as well. I just didn't why this prints though to begin with, but that's okay. 
All right, so file browser, you're not printing everything. Now, why is that? Okay, well, I found why print registers is not working. It's because after I call it, um, it immediately goes on <laughs> after it returns. So it immediately does the graphics test. I need to jump get input here. All right, so print reg prints it out and then does the prompt. So I need a new line all the way at the end probably. G will be the graphics test though. P will probably, oh, that doesn't go back. Went to, what is it doing? Jump to the main menu did not work for some reason. Call print registers. Well, print registers needs a final new line, I think. Let's go find that file here. What we can do is just print out a final new line, I guess. What I can do is push, push A and pop A as well to restore the stack. <laughs> Store and restore the stack. Let's do that. Maybe I should write hex starting like this. I don't know. Let's just do this. Zero E. I don't think I have to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. I might make a specific new line function that I can call that just prints a new line. Maybe that'd be easier, separate it out, but that's all right. I'll just move an A, L, A, and D, right? A, H, and D, H. And then we'll pop A and return. Just print it out. That did not work. It printed out a nice musical note, so that's cool. Is that not how you do 0xA and 0xD? Am I doing this wrong? Let's try this. Okay, it doesn't work with AH and DH, but whatever. I, th I thought that'd be the same thing, but I guess not. <laughs> For some reason. Would it be that? Is it 0A and 0D? Since this would be a nibble and this is a nibble and that makes one byte, which is AL. Yeah, it's 0A and 0D it looks like. Okay. Well, now I know. Can do that here as well. And we'll go back to the kernel and just one more time. I like that this window prints in random locations every time you mess with it. Isn't that awesome? So here we go. Print register. All right. We can reboot, which takes a bit. We can do directory, which doesn't print anything that I need to fix uh, when a graphics test. So why are we not printing our files out? Jump equal, Jesus, why do I always do that? <laughs> Only go if it's equal, man. For all you guys yelling at your screen, I apologize. If I don't cut all of that out, man. There we go, it was working all along. Simplest things. At least I can't, I was, for some reason I was reading the compare and the jump as it was working. Like the compare is CMP, jump is JMP, the MPs were going together. If, if I zoom out, you'll notice. I have a, I have my grandma fleece blanket going. I'm super comfy. <laughs> so I'm just double check, make sure directory works. Print register command works. Uh, graphics test works. Reboot works. The commands work, the files do not. I'm supposed to search, and that should work, but it's not. Calc, and we're, it just says try again, which is fine, that's what I wanted. Compares the byte at SI to whatever's in AL, and AL should be the byte at ESPX, which that might not be being reset, since ESPX is set to 2000, right? Don't I do that up here? I probably have to reset that to 1000, like I do for this, because every time it goes back to input, it's going to be reset to 2000, so that would make sense. I probably need to reset ES to, to 1000, and then I'll check and see if this works. SI should be okay. SI is at 2000, which is fine, because the data segment that this is in, that'll need to be 2000 anyway for our command string to be okay. So I think it's just an ESBX issue, so let's do that here. I don't think I can just move... Can I just move immediate into the extra segment? What did I just do? This doesn't work right. Invalid. I can't just do that. Annoyingly. That's okay. Yes, AX. I think I am going to go with this, just the H on the end notation or B for binary. Um, just because it looks a little cleaner. The 0X is more explicit, but I think this looks a little cleaner and neater, and I like my minimalism. So I'm going to probably go with that. Okay, let's see if this works then. So directory still prints out. All right, a little bit slow, that's okay. So this will check all the commands and then check the files. It was not found. Okay, calculator still doesn't work. Let's just see. 
Can I do this? Move test. <laughs> I don't know if this will work. This would be really nice if it did. Oh, it doesn't. I got a range. Oh, that's okay. So, don't I have debug tests? What do I call it? Yeah, DBG, which just prints out test. Let's let's do that. That'll work. So let's see if it finds like anything. If it's not zero, it compares. If the first byte matches, it'll go to start compare. Else it'll check the next file entry. So, well, what it will need to do is it'll be the last entry in the file table. So it should get B. It should add 16 and get K, 16 again, 16 again. It should find this. It may be because it's 10 length, but that shouldn't be an issue. Let's see if it ever gets to the first comparison part of it. Debug test, then we'll call print string. It does, okay, because it printed out test right there, okay. Let me also add new lines to the test, debug test. New line. Test, all right. It did find it, it's just not finding the end of it. So I know this part works. CL command, oh, probably because I'm not doing command length anymore, right? That might be why. That's probably a big giant reason why. What even is command length? We're not using it. Does CX contain the length here? It does, because we did pop right here. We're not messing with CX up until this point. So we shouldn't need to do this, because since we did this, we reset it. The only thing we're doing to CX is down here where we're decrementing. So let's see if that made any difference. Hey, that worked. Program loaded. Now does it work like the commands where I can just press the single letter? Nope, it says program not loaded. And the reason it does that is because if it's something in the file table, we add, we're <laughs> I'm hard coding to add four, right? Here, I'm adding four. So that's why that won't work, because C plus four is, you know, C or U. We have to go all the way to the end so that it skips this and adds four to go to zero. And that's why that doesn't work. It says try again, um, which try again loads that, which is interesting. It still works. Program not loaded, try again, then it loads the file browser again. I'm not sure I want to do that. Oh, it just, it does jump to the file browser. So let's get rid of this. We'll go to get input instead, yes. So not loaded message. Let's call this something else. Where is it at? I'm blind. There it is. Pro I'm going to call this program not loaded. Right? I'm going to change this message. I'm going to say program found, but not loaded. Or maybe, well, it, there could be an error where you didn't find the whole thing. Until I put in checking to check the whole length of the thing, which I'm not doing, and I need to do, then these won't be exactly right, because you can type in the subset of the full string, and it won't find it. So, But right now, we're just going to say, hey, program found, but not loaded. Try again. And we have the undefined symbol, of course, because I just changed it. All right, not loaded. Right there. Program not loaded. There we go. It just keeps moving this window wherever it fancies. All right, so calc, that'll do that. Program found, but not loaded. Try again. But the full length of it will work, and it goes back. Okay. But uh, I think we simplified maybe some things. I don't know. I move stuff around. And we're doing more like a normal prompt where it's checking commands and then it's going to check if you, if you, what you entered was not a command that it recognizes, if it's a file or a program, and then it loads it if it finds it. Type out name with spaces. You don't have to do this right now, so that's not really a bug. Or a to-do item, because you can type out any subset of the name if it's a command and not a program and it'll work. So we got all that working. That's all good. So... Um, there's other things I can work on. What did I do here? I can do a clear screen command, maybe. That'll be another thing. Because Linux has, like, control L, right? Clears that. Um, I don't think CLS works, no, but clear does. Clear does the same thing. But, uh, in Windows, it's CLS. It's, uh, CLS clears it. 
So I want to do a CLS because that's shorter than clear. And I don't feel like handling control and other characters right now <laughs> with our basic not really a shell. We'll do a little CLS command. Let's do this down here. I do want to change all these to new lines. So I'm going to do that and then I'll cut that out in editing and I'll be back. Okay, so just replaced all these with a new line. And it's a, yeah, it's a little more succinct now. I like this little EQU directive, even though that's not in blue, and it should be, but whatever. Let's make another command that isn't one of these. And call it clear screen command CLS. <laughs> that's fine. And it'll just be CLS. And this will be clear screen. Uh, we can either, there's a couple ways I can either reset like I have been doing, or I can do the, the scroll, I think, BIOS int 10 thing, AH6 maybe. So I'll look that up. But I'm going to try that one. Clear, clear screen by scrolling. I guess it'll go in the screen. Yeah. I'll just do this for now. I'll do screen. And it'll be clear screen. Dot .asm instead of dot .include, which I'm still not doing, that's all right. So we'll just make clear screen. This will be BIOS in 10 AH6. That's what we're going to do. All right, and we're going to call it clear screen, I guess. So we'll call this label clear screen so that we can call clear screen, and I will... Uh, push A first, and then we'll pop A, and we'll return at the end. All right. So what is this? Move into AH6. AL equals the number of lines to scroll up. This says 0 hex is clear the entire window, so let's just do that. Move AL 0. And if this works, then I'll do move AX to put into one line. CHCL is the row column of the upper left corner. DHDL, row column of windows lower right corner. I don't let's see if this does anything. I'm not messing with CX or DX. I don't know if that matters or not, so we'll find out soon. Um, but I need to make a little thing up here. Check commands. CX, so move DI, command, clear screen, move aside to the beginning again. Pete equal, compare string byte, jump equal. Oh, well, if it is equal, is there a call equal mnemonic? I don't think there is. Crap. That's okay. Jump equal, clear, call clear screen. <laughs> so let's do that here. This will be clear screen. Call clear screen. Very inefficient. Call clear screen and then we'll return. Okay. Oh no, don't return. We'll jump back to get input. So what happens if I enter in a bunch of crap and I do CLS? Doesn't do anything. There's not very much info on the internet on how this crap works. So I don't know what this attribute means, we're just going to do zero. So let's just XOR CX. So CH CL equals row column of upper left corner. DH is row. DL is column of the lower right. So we're in what, 80 by 25 text mode, right? So there's 80 rows. So DH would be 80. I don't know if it's 80 in hex or if it's in decimal. So let's assume it's decimal until told otherwise. Row would be 25, column would be 80. Apologies. Invalid operand, XOR CX with nothing, yeah. Needs to XOR it itself, doesn't it? That doesn't do anything. <laughs> Zero should clear the entire window, but it does not. And you know why it doesn't? Because I'm not calling int 10. Wow. I am, how tired am I today? Jesus Christ. Int 10 actually calls the stupid thing. 
<laughs> well, it does clear it, doesn't it? <laughs> Nothing else shows up, but it clears it. Um, okay, let's see if we even need these. I guess we do need those, because that didn't work. Well, if I change BH, these are experiments, my man. This is what you need to do. This is good testing. All right, BH doesn't do anything. That I know of, we're gonna get rid of it. And we're gonna do this. I don't know if these are hex or not, but this it should calculate to the right values in hex. So that clears everything, we don't really need that. Maybe scroll up doesn't work, maybe I need to do scroll down. <laughs> I mean, I can reset the screen until we find a way to implement that. That wouldn't be too bad, we can do that. We'll just call reset text screen right now. We will make that a better implementation later when I have time and when I'm not so tired. I mean, that's pretty good. It doesn't do the scrolling. It flickers a tiny bit. Oh well. I, th I think that's a, a decent implementation right now. It just calls a reset. We can, we can change that later. And I can change this too to clear screen. All right, reset text screen. Let's just... Uh, we will make this better later. I didn't want to set the comment column to eight. Don't do that. Do that. That just seems a bit cleaner to me. Awesome, directory. Print these out. I don't know what I was doing. Now I want to look at this again. Now there's too much crap on the screen. Get it out of here. Oh, thank you, man. Cool. Okay, so those are just some some little couple basic things. Got stuff moved around a little bit. I think it works a little bit better like this, in my opinion. To have it, you know, print go to the prompt, print go to the prompt. I, I just think this works a little bit better. So I think I think we're uh, I don't know, we're good to go so far. Um, we can work on saving to disk, or I can start on some kind of text editor. But I got you know plenty of stuff to do. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you then.